This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Seven hospitals on COVID red alert as admissions spike. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton on Monday night revealed that seven hospitals were now on red alert as COVID hospitalizations exceeded 84%. Another four hospitals are now on Amber Alert with admissions over 74% capacity. There are 24 hospitals in Jamaica. The latest statistics show that as at Sunday, there were 147 COVID hospitalizations with 44 patients moderately ill and 16 critical. Tufton speaking at a Jamaica House press conference said he assumed that the fast spreading Delta variant is in Jamaica although samples so far tested for the strain have been negative. But according to Tufton, there is a two-week lag in the testing of COVID-positive samples for the Delta strain. He is expecting that samples currently being tested will reveal that the strain is here. Jamaica has been seeing an increase in the number of COVID cases, the positivity rate and the reproductive rate, which is the rate at which one positive individual passes on the virus to another person. The positivity rate is now at 1.4, while on average, Jamaica is recording 135 positive COVID cases each day. Woman shot dead on Grantsman Drive in St. Andrew. A 47-year-old woman was shot dead on Grantsman Drive in St. Andrew on Sunday night. She has been identified as Karine McCollum, a cook of Grantsman Drive. About 8 p.m., gunmen opened fire on a group of persons, hitting Miss McCollum and another resident. Miss McCollum was pronounced dead and the other victim admitted to hospital. St. Catherine's stepfather, charged for fatal beating of four-year-old, remanded. The stepfather of four-year-old Nashawn Brown, who died after being beaten, was today remanded when he appeared before the St. Catherine Parish Court. 24-year-old Sean Bennett, who is charged with unlawful wounding, assault occasioning actual bodily harm, cruelty to child and child abuse, is expected to return to court on Thursday, July 29, when the matter will again be mentioned. At that time, his lawyer, Lyndon Wellesley, is expected to make another application for bail. Wellesley today applied for bail for his client, who is from Willardine in Spanish Town, St. Catherine, but was told by parish judge Opal Smith that another address was required before the request could be considered. Willesley agreed and told the court that he would renew the application on the next mention date. Allegations are that on Sunday, July 18, four-year-old Brown complained of feeling ill and was given a meal by his mother. He was allegedly eating slowly when Bennett became angry and proceeded to beat him with a stick. The child's mother reportedly intervened and was also assaulted. Shortly after, the child became unresponsive and was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. Bennett was subsequently arrested and charged. Police searching for men who abducted and raped student in Manchester. The Manchester police are searching for two men who abducted and raped an 18-year-old student in the parish last weekend. The teenager was also drugged by the men in the attack, which occurred in Bronte District on Sunday. It's reported that the teenager was walking when a car with two men aboard drove up, dragged her into the vehicle and took her into bushes. She was allegedly forced to drink a substance after being threatened. The teenager became unconscious after she was sexually assaulted. She was found by residents who took her to the hospital. Two JDF soldiers to face court in November on gun and ganja charges. The two Jamaica Defense Force corporals who are facing gun and ganja charges stemming from an incident in St. Elizabeth last year, have had their case transferred to the next sitting of the gun court section of the circuit court. The matter will be heard on November 22. The JDF officers also had their $800,000 bail extended. Rohan Mendez, 39, of a Kingston 10 address, and 38-year-old Robert Smith of Balaclava in St. Elizabeth, were held on October 13 with ganja weighing more than 1,500 pounds. The ganja was valued at $6.15 million. Tony Matterhorn's gun seized pending FLA probe.
Popular selector and DJ Tony Matterhorn is being investigated by the Firearms Licensing Authority after reports of an online threat made to a fellow entertainer were ventilated to the regulatory body. The Dirty Wine singer also had his firearm seized by the FLA pending the results of the probe. I can confirm that that is the case, a tight-lipped Shane Darling, Chief Executive Officer of the Firearm Licensing Authority, told the news. Reports are that the weapon was confiscated after the popular selector, whose real name is Dufton Anthony Taylor, was accused of making serious threats against a bounty killer with whom he has had decades-old feud on social media. The news spoke to Oshin Levy, the corporate communications officer of the FLA, who said, Yes, we are currently doing an investigation, and as the regulatory body regulating firearm usage, it is our duty to ensure that a licensed firearm holder is fit and proper to possess a firearm. She referred to Section 29 of the Firearms Act, which clearly sets out governing rules of behavior expected of a licensed firearm holder. Section 29 speaks to the considerations of being granted a license to carry a firearm, specifically temperament and mental fitness, she said. She issued a stern warning to licensed firearm holders with loose lips and volatile temperaments. As an entity, we are watching and sending a message to holders, encouraging persons to be responsible, not only in terms of keeping and care, but to be careful how you express yourself in the public space, as it may have implications. We are monitoring social media and considering all reports, Levy said. Once we receive a report, we will most likely check into the matter and ensure it is not something that is taken further. Once an investigation is done and is complete, there will be a further decision based on what we unearth and the outcome will be related to Mr. Taylor. Over the years, several entertainers have lost their license to carry firearms, and in recent months, several artists have been paraded through the courts on illegal firearm charges. Augustown man freed of murder charge. A man was acquitted of a charge of murder in the Home Circuit Court in Kingston, concluding a four-day trial before Justice Lorna Shelley Williams on Monday. The prosecution had alleged that Akeem McAlpin fatally stabbed Anthony Campbell in their Augustown St. Andrew community in January 2017 and that the attack was intentional. The prosecution called four witnesses, including a man, who was involved in the altercation in which Campbell was stabbed. The defense's case was that McAlpin was on his way to the shop when he was attacked by a knife-wielding man who later became the prosecution's key witness. The defense posited further that McAlpin, in an attempt to save his own life, disarmed his attacker. Campbell, who had joined in the attack on McAlpin, was subsequently stabbed. Shelley Williams sided with the defense and found McAlpin not guilty. Stricter COVID-19 control measures than those already announced are coming. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has served a notice that stricter COVID-19 related restrictions, which take effect today, are just a precursor to even tighter measures to come in another two weeks. At the start of the month, the government had announced a relaxation of measures, including the reopening of the entertainment sector. With a sharp rise in cases, however, Mr. Holness on Monday announced that the curfew from Monday to Saturday would move from 11 o'clock at night to 8 o'clock. It will begin at 3 p.m. on Sundays and public holidays. These changes were only the start, Mr. Holness stressed, that those measures were just some of the package of enhanced restrictive measures to come. He said the government was making the adjustments as Jamaica is now averaging 135 new COVID-19 infections per day. He added that the reproductive rate has also gone up to 1.4. 52 new COVID-19 cases, one more death. Jamaica has recorded one more COVID-19 fatality, pushing the tally to 1,179. The deceased is a 76-year-old man from Kingston and St. Andrew, whose death was previously under investigation. And one other death is under investigation, moving that figure to 103. Meanwhile, there were 52 new cases, with ages ranging from 2 to 87 years, pushing the total to 52,000, 141, 
with 3,713 being active. Of the new cases, 23 are women and 29 are men. Westmoreland accounts for the majority of the new infections, with 16 cases being recorded, followed by Kingston and St. Andrew with 12, and then St. James with 7. A total of 816 tests were conducted. The country's positivity rate stands at 16%. In the meantime, there were 24 more recoveries, increasing the total to 46,892. Some 145 persons are in hospital, with 42 being moderately ill and 23 critically ill. Nine persons are in government quarantine, while 46,704 are at home. Please remember to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.